Good morning and welcome everyone to Reimagine Access Control Digital Transformations hosted by Eker Innovation. I'm Stephen Tay, Business Development Director at Eker Innovation. I have been in this industry for 20 years, starting from a sales role to run project implementations for structure cabling, ELV, and security projects. For the last recent year, I came back frontline to do business development for Eker Innovation. We are excited to have you with us today to find out more on smart lock, smart key, and cloud solution from AC Solution. A little introduction on Eco Innovation. We are a technology system integrator specializing in providing design, consultancy, project implementations, and 24 hours SRA maintenance services in the areas of data center infrastructure management, integrated fiscal security facility management software and IT services. On the slide itself, we can see the itemized product and solution that we provide. For example, contactless ISMS solution for fiscal security, full suite of structure cablings and hot out containment system for data centers, facility management software and uh, red and stacks, e-waste management systems and the uh, maintenance contract for SLA. We at Eco Innovation aims to provide you with the best in class, cutting edge technology, smart, secure, and automated data centers and IT operating environment. Our client base spans across various sectors from data centers, government, high end manufacturing, education, and commercial. I hope that by the end of the session, your organization will be able to improve the accountability of your asset, workforce productivity, and embark a greener initiative with ACES solution. So I will start. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining the webinar and uh, the webinar on digital transformation in Access Management System. On behalf of Access, I would like to thank Ica Innovations for inviting us to share our expertise, experience, and our vision on the future of access uh, management system in the age of digital transformation. I would like to thank also our CEO, Mr. Majid Mikara, for opening this webinar and for allowing uh, myself as a chief architect of Access International to discuss with you, our distinguished experts, on how you can benefit from digital access management. I would like to present myself before proceeding with today's agenda. I am a Canadian national living in Shenzhen, uh, China. Uh, I have a degree in computer engineering where I have specialized in electrical engineering, embedded systems and software engineering. I have been with Axis since May, 2010, starting as a CTO of electronics and software departments. And in the last three years as a chief architect, uh, I have been instrumentally involved in the design and development of the electronics and software platform and contributed towards several of our patents. Currently, I'm leading the architecture department where our responsibility is in the formulation of solutions with our existing and new products through customization and integration of our access management platform. The architecture department engages closely with our customers which helps us understand the wants, needs, and pain points in the daily operations for security and workforce management in the maintenance of fixed and mobile remote assets. Our business has permitted us to experience our customers' pain points in regions like Africa, Southeast Asia, East Asia, South America, and the Middle East. Our R&D team is in Shenzhen and also in Chennai in India. We support globally our customers with a 24 hour and seven days a week customer support service available through email, support portal, and in app live chat. Our experience in different countries and cultures have helped the architecture, the software, and the mechatronics team to understand how your business is transforming in this digital transformation age and to bring solutions that matches best your needs. Today's agenda includes a summary about Access International. Then we will dive into the technical details about our solutions for several industries and verticals. And we will conclude with a roadmap of what is the future 
in digital access management, following up with a session of Q&A with Mr. Stephen Tate and my colleague, Roy Bourgeli. So let's start. So what is digital transformation? Uh, digital transformation, uh, what is the digital transformation in your business and how is that impacting you? Well, it is an integral part of every corporate business strategy where the industry is remodeling their business, leveraging on digitalization to remain competitive within their markets. It is reducing customer costs and increasing satisfaction in customer experience and services through operational and maintenance optimization. It is an integrated phenomenon, bringing functionalities and services to a centralized platform on cloud and edge server technologies. It is a catalyst of data acquisition and correlation from IoT devices management software, CCTV, and sensors, realizing never expected insights about your business operations and reporting in the form of information on an automated escalation. It is about providing the speed and the efficiency for reacting towards changes and unexpected events affecting your day-to-day -day business activities with effective response to your customers. The bottom line is that digital transformation is a pathway for your business survival in this very quickly changing and competitive environment where your customers wants and needs and the speed at which you adapt to change is paramount to your survival. So how is digital transformation remodeling access management? Well, classical access control system as a physical and electronic technology that exists in response to security pain points uh, within your business and industry. In the past 10 years, technological innovations have contributed towards the increase of capacity and decrease of costs in computer power and data storage. Increasingly fast and cheaper internet capabilities in wired and wireless technologies such as 5G, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth, LoRaWAN, and the IoT or Sigfox have contributed towards explosion of IoT monitoring and remote control devices for the service industry in telecom, utilities, data center, and many more. Upwards trends in virtualization such as uh, using VMware, has allowed the fast development of cloud and edge technologies as reliable, accepted, cheap, and standard solutions. So Access International is evolving with digitalization of the industry, leveraging on these technologies as a global access manager company instigated in 1999. It specializes in security and access management of fixed and mobile assets using smart key and keyless solution. Now, well, uh, what is Access? Well, Access provides a personalized and expert access management solution by listening to your pain points and defining requirements and specifications that best fits your business to protect your assets everywhere. Access develops solutions with the following five goals in mind. Number one is the ease of operation, then enhance security, enhance maintenance, reduce workload, visibility, and control. Starting with ease of operations, the access management platform leverages on a proprietary technology called the code generating system, which is in short CGS. It is based on an OTP system that allows the secure distribution of access to open locks on fixed and moving assets in remote locations. It provides enhanced security mechanism to safely and remotely block lost and stolen keys. For enhanced security, the remote access management to open locks allows the reduction of internal theft. Each key, and lock are unique, 
They cannot be copied nor duplicated. All the trails record access requests and access logs for the keys and locks. The software usage by the user administrator at the control center is recorded as activity logs for auditing purposes. For enhanced maintenance, the logs do not require maintenance. They are powered by the keys. Keys require, require a battery replacement for every two years. Therefore, there is a minimal OPEX for using the solution and there's no maintenance expenditure and none of our locks need any type of reprogramming in a, to allow people to open the locks. In fact, all the decision-making of our uh, of uh, uh, accessing the locks is made by the key, hence the, the access control is in the key, not inside of the lock. Uh, reduce workload. The enhanced digital security reduces your insurance premiums. Uh, using the GPS data originating from the mobile application increases security by applying a geofencing while requesting to access a fixed or mobile asset. It allows auditing of completed work orders through the access and request logs. And finally, for the visibility, it provides control and visual data of the security of your assets and keeps track of the KPIs. It helps to enhance control through visual inspection with time and location updated in real time on the live dashboard and recorded in the historical audit trails. What are the key advantages of the access mechatronic solution? So let, let us compare traditional mechanical locks versus access mechatronic locks. Well, in key handling, we know that the world is spending a lot of money on green technology. But if we dig on how green technology is produced or utilized, we find a lot of operational deficiencies. Access mechatronic locks solve operational deficiencies by remotely controlling each key user through CGS plus code distribution. Therefore, it reduces the travel time. And at the same time, it reduces the green gas effect by eliminating the need to go and collect a key from a regional office, but rather having the technician to go directly from the, from the nearest point uh, for, to, to, to the nearest point where they have to do a maintenance. In key duplication, each key and lock is uniquely initialized by your access management platform, which means that it's done by your instance do it your, with your installation and cannot be modified by another installation. It is initialized with multiple level of encrypted identifiers, making the key and lock impossible to copy or duplicate. Access management, virtual access rights based on key users profile define specific and time-based access to fixed or mobile assets. It allows a secure distribution or CGS plus codes to the key users through wireless or wire-free communication pathway. Uh, and also in security, access locks are designed for remote access in regions where physical asset monitoring is impossible. Access locks cannot be bumped nor picked. The electronics protect uh, the lock from brute force attacks by access says pro proprietary encryption algorithm based on AES 128-bit. And finally, the access logs, it provides a traceability for attempted lock access, which is recorded on the locks as well as the keys as access logs. The access logs are transferred to the access management platform for analysis, reporting, and escalations. The access logs combined with the request logs and the GPS data indicate when, where, why, and how the key user attempted to access an asset in a remote location. Now, how access is digitally transforming access control into digital access management. Access 
International is a company that went through several evolutions as we redefined what access manager is for the service industry in telecom, utilities, and data centers and logistics. In the phase one, we started as an access control system provider. We built our core standard in security re reporting and encryption as a wire-free programmable access control system utilizing time-based access rights. We continuously listened and experienced our customer pain points in remote asset management, where we created the fixed password key, which solved the loss and stolen key issue. In the phase two, our habit in listening and experiencing our customer pain points led us towards the creation and implementation of the CGS propriety algorithm based on OTP. In the first generation of CGS, we replaced the fixed password with the CGS code. The key users were forced to request for a CGS code by calling the control center or through an automated SMS request, which allowed our customer to have control over when the keys were being utilized to access a remote asset. The CGS technology was the first step which developed into the CGS Plus. CGS Plus eliminated the need to pre-program the keys with access rights. The CGS Plus technology encrypted time, date, locks, keys into a short time-based access code entered in the key and decoded on the fly into an access right. For the first time, the true wire-free access control was born as a solution for remote asset management, where you were able to answer the when, why, how, where, and what. In phase three, the CGS Plus technology opened the doors for access to create endless solutions that transformed the company into an access management system. Leveraging on the CGS Plus technology, access was able to develop the access manager platform into an integral solution matching the industry and country specific workflows in asset maintenance. This allowed the exchange of information between software platforms, which led access into the digital access management. To facilitate CGS Plus technology, access developed the smart access mobile application, of course, available on iOS and also on, uh, on, on uh, Android through Google Play. So we develop in combination with the Bluetooth keys for enhanced real-time access management while keeping the CGS Plus technology as a backbone for redundancy. In phase four, with the power of EMS Enterprise, Access built modules and components which allowed information exchange not only through software platforms, but with integration of IoT, CCTV, sensors, and other systems. This, the module that allowed us to do that is called API Connect, which is a module within the EMS Enterprise with a collection of business use cases for different industries, which allows external devices, regardless of the manufacture or communication protocols to easily connect to the business use cases to minimize the integration efforts. So EMS Enterprise Platform is a system that can coexist within your digital and centralized ecosystem. Now, the, let's talk about the CGS Plus. The CGS Plus is a technology that was developed in 2013. One more, uh, in 2013 for wire-free uh, solution with redundancy in mind that allowed the control center to distribute access to a key user without reprogramming the keys. CGS Plus is a core backbone of our technology and it was implemented to provide you true wireless free, uh, sorry, true 
wire free, it's not wireless, it's wire free access management system. The CGS Plus code is time based, giving access for 10 minutes or eight hours for the emergencies to a specific key to open a specific lock. The lock is associated to an asset whereby the key user calls the control center or sends an SMS or to uh, or uh, sends an SMS to request an entry or exit to a fixed or mobile asset. The distribution of CGS plus code is controlled through the virtual access rights and keys users profile. The virtual access right is created manually or automatically through the integration with the trouble ticketing platform. A request log is recorded when the key user requests an entry or exit to a fixed or mobile asset, following a workflow specific process for your business and industry. The request log is updated in real time on the EMS enterprise dashboard and in the request logs report. Access logs are uploaded through our programmers, which are in the form of USB, IP, or 3G programmers, or through the smart access mobile application when using our Bluetooth keys. So CGS Plus introduced enhanced security features for lost and stolen keys, which allow the key to block itself automatically when the key is used in the wrong lock three consecutive times. The access logs in the key and locks are recorded during the unauthorized access and can be audited during investigations. Why access? How access managers solves challenges and pain points. Access provides a three-step personalized access management solution that fits your business according to the best practices by understanding your pain points. The first step is solution consultancy. We engage with you to understand your business by identifying your pain points, your country, and culture specific requirements. And by using our expertise in access manager, we design a solution that best fits your business. Our focus is to reduce your operational costs, increase efficiency, and provide security and control of your workforce and remote assets. The second step is the solution development. We develop solutions with our existing or new products and including our services. We customize, personalize, and integrate our software platform to meet your needs, to be part of your digital ecosystem while we engage with your stakeholders in every step of the development. The third part is the, our post delivery services. Access provides a 24 hour and seven days a week customer service support that is available by email, customer support portal, and through the in-app live support to customers that have already, uh, that are already using our system, our platform called EMS Enterprise. And this is followed by our SLA, which is designed according to your industry and requirements within your business. So what is solution consultancy? Access is an expert in the personalization of mechatronic access management solutions. We leverage on our personal engagement to create solutions in security and digitization that fits within your digital ecosystem satisfying your stakeholders. So we analyze your requirements and pain points from project briefs and requirement specifications. We build your story by identifying the stakeholders' interests, the challenges faced in your country, industry, and specific to your business structure. We correlate your story with the industry-specific requirements, and we identify products and services that, fits, that best fits your requirements. We prepare the business requirement, including business workflows, system workflows, IT architectures, API definitions, for project acceptance by your stakeholders. So now let us go through a few examples representing solutions designed for our customers in specific industries. 
These solutions are very heavily based on business workflow specific and standard within each industry. One of the issues that these industries face is that they already have a business workflow on paper and they have trained their staff to follow the rules, but there's no digital data linking the evidence to the business workflow. Rules without data evidence is a failure and data evidence without rules is a failure as well. That is why we focus on how to use technology to implement the rules and get the data as evidence to prove the business workflow. This is an example of a solution-based workflow used in access management for the maintenance of telecom infrastructure for tower companies and mobile operators. I'm going to go a little bit slow here uh, so that you can actually take the time to see the flow of these diagrams. There's four examples I will go through actually. So uh, this workflow is designed uh, for co-location where more than one mobile operator shares the same tower site. The stakeholders are the network operators as software users and system administrators at the control center. And the field engineers are the key users who are accessing the assets on tower sites. In the event of a preventive maintenance or an incident, a trouble ticket is created and assigned to the closest field engineer with the credentials allowing them to maintain that particular asset. The trouble ticket is generated through a work order and pushed to EMS Enterprise, which is our software platform, where a virtual access right is created based on the trouble ticket information specific to a field engineer, site, asset, and maintenance type. The field engineer then travels to the site. At arrival, the field engineer requests to check in to the site and the work order using the trouble ticket number through SMS or the smart access mobile application request. Then EMS Enterprise will take this information and validates the request and verifies the location of the field engineer through the GPS data obtained by the smart access mobile application. The field engineer is now allowed to start work by taking a picture of the asset and opening the lock. Just to give a little bit more information about taking a picture, this is a feature that exists in our system. It's called actually an image verification, whereby when before the work starts, you can force the field engine to take a picture of the work they have to do where the picture is sent with the access data, that means the access logs or the request logs with the watermark of the GPS coordinate to the to, uh, to, to EMS enterprise. And then the, they will start actually doing the work. And once they finish the work, they have to take a picture again and uh, uh, in order to request to close the site. This allows you from the control center to have an evidence in your records that the work has been completed. Because of course, these locations in a lot of times, there's no CCTV. It's very difficult to, uh, to, to know what is going on in real time. That's why we, since we are experts in remote asset maintenance, therefore we were able to implement such, fear, such feature to be, to, to be used everywhere. So once the work is completed, the field engineer will use the smart access mobile application to take a picture of the completed work and request to check out the site where the CGS plus code will be used to lock down the asset and the site. The request and access logs will be recorded and transferred to the trouble ticketing platform where the information will be consolidated with the work order. All solutions that we have is based on our basic check-in and check-out workflow, utilizing virtual access rights and GPS location to validate and accept the request to enter or exit a fixed or mobile asset. This basic workflow is part of the enhanced 
personalized business workflow solution designed by Axis. So let's go to the next uh, example solution. This, the data center solution is another example leveraging on API Connect. Uh, the API Connect is developed with business use cases, capturing CCTV videos, snapshots, alarms based on visual motion detection, and door open, close status through the door sensors. The door sensors are used to report the real-time status to the live dashboard on EMS Enterprise, as well as to detect unauthorized brute force entry to the data center cabinets, which means that on our EMS Enterprise, EMS, uh, Enterprise uh, software, we have created a specific dashboard for the for data centers, whereby it allows you to have a visualization of multiple data centers at the same time. And for each data center, you actually have a status that shows you whether the, the, there is someone at the data, there's entry at the data centers and exit, uh, whether the data center is closed or it's, the, it's, it's there, there's an unauthorized access and the same thing for each and every cabinet. So the CCTV footage is used for live monitoring of the data center and to capture snapshots and videos whenever the door sensor or the visual motion detector senses an unauthorized access while the system is armed. At the arrival, the field engine will request to check in the data center. The request validation will disarm the data center and will allow the field engine to unlock the main door. The field engine will request to open data cabinets using the smart access mobile application where the open status will be displayed and recorded in EMS Enterprise. Once the work is completed, the field engineer will request to close the data cabinets and will request to close the data center. Once the doors are closed and locked, the data center will be armed at checkout. Uh, one thing I would like to add also is that as I just, uh, explained before, the uh, image verification can also be part of the solution. So we can add that one layer, uh, extra layer of uh, in the in the checklist for checking in and checking out, so that the uh, field engineer can take a picture at the beginning of the work and can take a picture at the end of the work. Now. Let's go to the next example. This example is about machinery. So machinery maintenance is another example of a procedure based on lockout tagout workflow for maintenance that may cause harm or death if it is not properly shut down from the source, which means that machines, for example, that have a very high voltage in the, we see that in the power industry, or in machines that are used in manufacturing that are pneumatic machines, for example, whereby if the, if the maintenance person goes and fixes the machine, needs to climb into the machine, whereby if the machine is not shut down, it may cause a harm, even the death of the person. That's what we, the, in that case, there's a procedure actually that is used called the lockout tagout. And in fact, in the United States, this is re regulated by OSHA and they have uh, a, checklist for that. So before starting the maintenance, it requires the technician to follow a checklist as part of the procedure, whereby the technician must allocate all the energy sources, notify the affected employees, shut down the equipment, isolate the equipment, and install a lockout device with a padlock followed by a verification proving that the equipment is not energized. The checklist can be implemented into the smart access mobile application, where not only it provides a digital evidence, but a digital signature from the technician who is carrying out the checklist, confirming that the procedure was followed. Additionally, picture verification can be used and collated with the evidence. So the technician can open the locks and start the work and close the locks and follow the lockout a re removal procedure whereby the technician must remove all the tools 
check that all the employees are cleared from the machine, remove all the lockout devices, notify employees that the lockout devices are removed and then energize the machine. So let's go to the next example. So this example, until now we've talked about um, fixed assets. Now we are going to talk about this. I'm going to talk one example about uh, mobile assets, but in specifically in the oil and gas, but please note that the, in the logistics, it's like, for example, companies like Amazon, where they collect the material from one of their depots and they start distributing, follows pretty much the same type of workflow as well. So you can imagine this type of workflow being used by the people who are del delivering for Amazon. Uh, it could be FedEx, DHL, or we have certain cases where uh, it's, uh, uh, we have one case in India where it's uh, delivering milk, uh, delivering, also picking up uh, uh, um, harmful materials from hospitals as well that use exactly the same workflow. So uh, workflow for logistics is implemented in EM's enterprise for the transportation of oil and gas, allowing to plan a route from the terminal to one or many retail outlets where the fuel is decantinated. The GPS data from the smart access mobile application is used to create a geofence at each waypoint along the route, making sure that there is no unauthorized uh, access to the tank truck. The integration with the ERP system permits the automation of the creation of the routes, waypoints, and the association of a tank truck driver with the actual tank truck keys and their mobile phone. In the case where there is a vehicle tracking system, also known as VTS, installed in tank truck, EM's enterprise can connect to receive the GPS coordinate while keeping the GPS data from the mobile phone as a redundant channel. And what we mean by that is that there could be some cases whereby uh, if the vehicle tra tracking system is down, then automatically can switch over and get the GPS information through the, uh, by using our uh, mobile application, which fetches the information directly from the mobile phone. Of course, you cannot have a solution without the hardware. So our locks and keys within this workflow are certified as IECEX compliant as an intrinsically safe apparatus within zone one, which allows us to sell our solution use in application where there is high concentration of explosive particles in the air surrounding an inlet found on a tank truck, for example. We are also PESO certified, which is the equivalent certification for the Indian market approved by the Indian government. So like as mentioned before, similar workflows can be implemented for the transportation of goods in any industry which requires logistics. So let's go into solution development. So we talked about workflows. We talked about our engagement for building a personalized solution and about our core competencies and technology. But we did not talk about our access manager platform, the EMS Enterprise. Why is e what is EMS Enterprise? EMS stands for Intelligent Access Management System which is a scalable, flexible, easy to use for intelligent management of distributed assets based on our understanding of our global customers, business and security needs. It is a web-based platform which allows you to access from any computer among your organization using the three most popular web browsers, uh, Microsoft Edge, Mozilla Firefox and Google Chrome. It is easy to train and easy to understand, easy to deploy because it utilizes the latest Microsoft technologies and backward with backward compatibility. It provides on-premise installation and integration with ERP systems, both on physical and cloud server. It provides collaboration among the teammates utilizing the productivity features and functionalities. It provides regional base real-time and monitoring of the security status of assets everywhere. 
It is very flexible, leveraging on the CGS Plus technology, which allows the wire-free distribution of access to fixed and mobile assets. Through the Bluetooth technology, real-time communication using the smart access mobile application allows a real-time synchronization with the keys. Here are some screenshots from EMS Enterprise. You will notice that the UI is based on material designed by Google, which provides a universal look and feel to reduce the learning curve for new EMS Enterprise users. On the right side is the real-time dashboard with the live ticker at the top of the page and the MIS display in the middle, which illustrates the activities in real time as pie charts, graphs, and lists. The geographical representation in the GIS illustrates the security status and the presence of key user at a location where there is an open asset with personal information plotted over the Google's map. The live ticker illustrates the system information, site information, and the latest alerts, escalations, and notifications. <clears throat> EMS Enterprise is optimized to, for, to handle a large amount of data through productivity tools, reports, and in-app sharing of information among the software users. The clipboard is used to save incomplete work, permitting you to continue your work uh, at a later time. It allows you to share reports and screenshots among software users. It allows you to export the data in PDF and CSV formats. The alerts are updated in real time through notifications and escalations that contain historical data of authorized and unauthorized events. The messenger allows the software to communicate with each other within EMS Enterprise for regional and multi-country deployments. So EMS Enterprise is a modular platform. The base of the platform, uh, uh, the place of the platform is, uh, is uh, called EMS Enterprise Core, which contains the basic access management functionalities and workflows. EMS Enterprise is designed with scalability in mind, allowing the access management platform to evolve with your business wants and needs. So the first module is the MIS uh, Managing Information uh, System. It's a real-time historical consolidated data points illustrated on widget-based graphical interfaces in the form of charts, graphs, lists, and geographical locations. Operations optimization locates and assigns the closest field user to carry out maintenance according to the SLA. Workforce security enhanced is for the enhanced, enhanced authorization workflow for the access management of assets with geolocation, time step, and image verification. Field operation manages access of assets for vendors who are assigned for maintenance through work orders. Remote management is an out-of-office mobile access management for emergencies based on access policies assigned to administrators, managers, and team leaders. Uh, and this out-of-office uh, uh, mobile uh, management is actually built into our smart access mobile application, whereby uh, when you log in as an administrator, it will give you those, um, those, uh, those management features that will allow you to do uh, work outside of the office. Why is that important? Because as an example, if I take the telecom industry, is that it happens that sometimes there is an incident outside of the normal working hours where there's absolutely no one at the network operations center. And when that happens, of course, your customer doesn't care uh, that you, uh, your, uh, your, uh, that everybody has gone home. So you, as uh, a, as a manager, you will probably end up getting a call at two in the morning, 
And a lot of times these companies, they don't allow uh, you unless they have a VPN access to connect from home to the office. So in that case, for all the emergency uses and to allow people to enter through uh, a high level of authorization, we have actually built features in the app that will allow only the managers to be able to uh, give authorization to, uh, to repair an inc incident. And at the same time, our EMS enterprise will be recording all those activities so for auditing purposes at a later point in time, if it required through an investigation. So the next one is the API Connect. The API Connect is a hardware and software system connection interface that provides a fast solution for integration. Then there's support center tracking of support tickets within EMS Enterprise with a 24 hours and seven days a week customer support team availability with live chat. Uh, the next one is our team center, which is productivity optimizing operations and communication module, allowing secure data sharing between administrators, management and team leaders. And finally, the event center, which is real-time monitoring of field users activities and asset status. So how EMS Enterprise solves real-time remote access? The smart access mobile application is the heart of the mobile digital access management system. The mobile application analyzes, processes, and pushes the data to the control center, allowing to take decisions based on, da on data. It increases efficiency, provides emergency functionalities, and a remote interface for monitoring and capturing notifications for the operations. It provides functionalities to the key users to take photos for image verification, give navigational directions, and ticket-based access to assets. The smart access mobile application keeps evolving, incorporating functionalities that allow your business to quickly respond to incidents. So EMS Enterprise is a focal point of the access management ecosystem, supporting key and keyless hardware technologies. As you see on my screen over here, on the, uh, on, on the right side, it supports all the hardware that is uh, made by Axis uh, and, de 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 and developed by Axis. And on the left side, it's, it's the integration with other devices. And this entire ecosystem that we have, which is for digital access managed, can coexist within a larger digital ecosystem that you have or you are putting in place as part of your digital transformation. So the key hardware requires no maintenance and is designed to withstand harsh environments installed in remote locations where it is very hard to reach. It offers functionalities to, for redundant access in the case of a failure. While the Kiva solution leverages a low power Bluetooth technology designed for harsh weather and controlled with a smart access mobile application. API Connect is a three layered module within EMS Enterprise. In layer one, we have the data, it's, it's the data representation layer illustrated in the dashboard and in the reports. In layer two, it's a business use case linked with the workflows for specific industry and business requirements. Layer three is a communication channel that links different brands of devices with similar functionalities, utilizing the same use cases for efficient and fast integration. Let me just uh, talk about that just a little bit more. What do we mean different brands here? We know that, for example, uh, I, uh, I talked about data centers. You might have five different data centers, right? And all those five data centers will have exactly the same process to access the, the, the data center and to access the cabinets for open and closing of the cabinets and entry and exit of the data center. You, you decide to put, for, exa for example, a door sensor on each and every cabinet. Now, 
maybe in uh, in in in, uh, in data center one and two, you have a specific brand name. In data center three and four, five, you have a different brand name. But at the end of the day, the use case is exactly the same. It's just the brand of the device is different and the communication protocol. So what we do at Access is we build one use case, which is in the layer two. And then for each and every data center that you have, what we do is that we just reconnect to a new uh, device using the new communication protocol without having to make any changes in layer one and two. This actually helps to make the system more scalable. It helps to reduce the integration time because in that case, the only thing that we worry about is just the connection, not about rebuilding the entire, the entire uh, uh, use case because you have a different brand name of, of device. So the API, uh, API Connect is integrated with the network server. As you see, network server is right between the aggregator and also our application, which is the device management system that may be embedded in the device. For example, in the CCTV systems, a lot of times it's embedded inside of the NVR or the DVR, or on the cloud, such as the Things network that is used for LoRaWAN. Uh, and the data from each device is sent to an aggregator. So if you have a site where you have uh, a lot of devices that are IoT, for example, they will connect to one aggregator and that aggregator with a single connection will send to the network server, whereby the network server will do the controlling and storage of the data. And our application EMS will connect through the API to that a network server to be able to re take the data and process it. That means that we do the integration application to application rather than directly to the hardware. So here's an example of door sensors connected to an aggregator, which transferred the data to the network server, which is subsequently captured by the API connect. The sensors are logically associated to an asset with an access lock where the security status is displayed in real time on EMS Enterprise. It uses an additional authentication step during the operational workflow of entry and exit uh, from the site, assuring the closure of the doors. <clears throat> Here's another example of an integration with a trouble ticketing platform. The illustration on the right side is a simplified workflow of the implementation. This integration allows the creation of tickets for preventing maintenance and incidents created from the trouble ticketing platform. The trouble ticket is pushed to EMS Enterprise where the information is used to create virtual access rights associated to the field engineer. Access is granted based on the information received from the ticket and the entry of the ticket number during the site entry and exit request. The routine maintenance or otherwise known as ad hoc visits is when a group of field engineers are assigned to visit the site in a specific region without an assigned ticket. The ticket number is created when the user requests, uh, requests access to the site where the reason of the visit is entered through a short code. Now, uh, EMS Enterprise is designed utilizing Microsoft technology such as .NET Framework, ASP.NET, IIS, and SQL Server. EMS Enterprise can be deployed on a distributed IT architecture using Windows and SQL clustering and always on functionalities increasing the uptime based on two or more server nodes. EMS Enterprise is compatible with AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, and it is integrated already with the AWS RDS services. Access is further developing compatibility with more functionalities with the cloud services, such as the Azure Active Directory for the single sign-on feature. Finally, the, what is the future of access management? Well, the future of access management is in data acquisition and analysis, extraction of insights, alerts, 
and escalations and predictive automation. We have the natural behavior to judge and make decisions based on causality. The source of information for causal decisions, a decision making is most of the time old and tainted by personal feelings. In the recent decades, big data has proven that in order to predict a future event with high confidence level, you need to make the data do the talking. Access has realized the power of data. As the service industry grows, cost effectiveness, efficiency, uptime, in-time reaction is becoming paramount to stay competitive. In 2016, we had the first experience to integrate with trouble ticketing platform. We experienced the importance of predictive prediction in preventive maintenance from the data. We recently led an experimental study with a customer five-year uh, access managing data for 10,000 locks spread through, throughout one country. Uh, we correlated the, the access uh, requests and logs with the temperature changes in, uh, in each region. With the integration of the, of the trouble ticketing platform, we were able to realize the failure types, time, intervals based on temperature changes with a very high confidence level, which led to an accurate refinement of the preventive maintenance program. Access is now in the age of digital access management, leveraging on API Connect, allowing to get data from multiple sources. Our R&D team is continuously learning from the industry and improving the power of EMS Enterprise as the digital access management solution. Well, I would like to thank you very much again for this uh, wonderful opportunity. I would like to thank uh, ICA Innovations and Mr. Tay, uh, Stephen Tay, our valued partners and friends for today's opportunity. We cannot fit all our offerings within the, this one hour uh, because of course, when we talk about solutions, each solution I can, we can talk for hours on end because there's, a lot of flexibility, a lot of differences between uh, the different businesses, business requirements, needs, and so on. I hope that you were able to uh, get important insights about access management. And I hope that through EK Innovations, we'll be able to connect in the future to further discuss about how Access International can contribute towards the digital, digitalization of business, of your business. Again, thank you very much and uh, be safe and it was a pleasure to talk to you today thank you okay thank you please feel free to drop us an email or, or contact us again once again we, we thanks for the audience and uh, their participations and also the, the whole technical session itself we also thanks ASICS and the team itself for supporting this this webinar successfully okay likely we lastly we'd like to share uh that Upcoming, we'll be running some promotion for uh, AC for AC solution for the SME cloud solution. We will share more on the highlights in our LinkedIn and our, our, our website itself. And I'm likely will send some emails to you to update what are the promotion about. If there's any further, if there are any any further uh, um, information or any kind of presentation or any kind of uh, inquiries on AC solution please do feel free to contact us, okay, uh, by calling us or via our marketing email itself. Okay, once again, thank you for the time. Thank you for, for your attention. Uh, we will close up this uh, webinar session. Thank you. Thank you.